Hello Year 10. Today we're focusing on English language, paper one, and this time it's question five. So the plan of action for today is a quick retrieval quiz on bayonet charge, which is accessible on Teams. I'll quickly recap English language paper one. We'll focus on question five and the success criteria for your response. And then I might give you some ideas on how you could begin your answer. So all the resources are available on Gopher Schools and Teams. And I'd like you to submit your work to the assignment section because we hate class notebook. It's confusing and it doesn't make sense to me. So without further ado, here is the retrieval quiz. Now you're going to need to log on to Teams for this one. And it's super quick. I really like you to do this. It's not really to test you and your knowledge. It's more for me to see where there are gaps in my teaching. Um, if you're worried that it's gonna be a little bit laborious and I've tricked you by saying quiz, it's not. It's literally 10 questions and it's multiple choice. It'll take you about three minutes. So please make sure you do this first because it gives me an idea of where the class's strengths are as a whole and where I need to fill in a few gaps. So please make sure you do that first. Pause the video now if you have to. Okay, just a quick recap on the structure of paper one. You don't need to write this down unless you have some sort of overwhelming desire. So section A is reading and it's worth 40 marks. Question one is super short. Um, it's just inference and retrieval. It's only worth four marks. Question two is always analysing language. Question three is analysing structure. And question four is the task you did most recently for language. And that is about evaluating a text. And that's where you kind of give your opinion and you make judgments. Section B is what we're focusing on today. And that's also worth 40 marks. However, you only get one chance at this. There's, there's not different questions. You get two options, but you only pick one. So I'm going to move straight on to what those options are. OK, so question five. It'll always give you a little bit of context about what you're writing for. So in this case, you're going to enter a creative writing competition. Why not? Option one is write a description suggested by this picture. Option two is write the opening part of a story about a dangerous fire. Now, one is not superior to the other. It's totally up to you which one you go for. There are some differences, though. So with option one, the description, it allows you to focus far more on the details. If you're writing a description, you don't really need to think about plot and action in the same way as you would if you were doing the narrative task. Um, I'd say option one is probably better for those of you that are struggling to find inspiration because it gives you something tangible to focus on. Um, option two gives you a little bit more freedom. You do need to think about the plot a little bit more carefully, though. Although that's not to say that with this one, you just ignore how you're structuring your ideas. It's always important that they're marked exactly the same way. And I'll go through the mark scheme in a little bit more detail. Now, my plan, um, because reading your creative writing is way more interesting than, than marking kind of a question two or three. Um, I'm going to do some whole class feedback for this. So make sure you submit this on time so I can have a chance to look through everything properly. So make a decision you might want to come back to this slide once i've talked you through the rest um it's totally up to you just let me know when you're doing your work whether you're going for option one or option two it just makes it a little bit easier for me to mark okay so your success criteria then as you've already seen this question is worth 40 marks and that's split into two so ao5 is worth 24 marks and that's for your content and organization um, so it says here communicate clearly effectively and imaginatively selecting and adapting tone style and register for different forms purposes and audiences and organize information and ideas using structural and grammatical features to support coherence and cohesion of text it basically means be interesting use different techniques and think about your structure that that's all AO5 is and the AO6 is about your vocabulary choices and your spelling, punctuation and grammar. And that's worth 16 marks. So we do need to make sure we're thinking about that. Um, I've kind of summed it up here in, in non-exam speak. So be interesting. Use fancy words. Use a range of techniques. Use a range of punctuation securely and for effect. 
make sure you vary the way you begin your sentences and consider your structure. How are you going to make this interesting? And although a lot of us hate planning, generally speaking, the best candidates plan their work. So it is worth doing a little mind map of your ideas or a bullet point list or however you plan best, um, even if it's images, just to help you out a little bit. It's when we plan our ideas, we ensure that we're thinking about this this AO5 part of structure. So don't just ramble, really consider what you're doing. Again, you can always skip back to these bits, but on the next slide, I'm going to tackle how you can begin. So there's, there's obviously different ways to tackle this. And I think a lot of students with creative writing struggle to begin. They're not sure the best way to do it. So I've given you some different options. Um, obviously, there's loads more, but this is what I could fit on the slide. So I've stolen straight from a text we looked at last time, Fahrenheit 451. And you could start with an ambiguous sentence, something that raises questions. So it was a pleasure to burn. Or you could begin quite descriptively. Um, I've stolen this from Rebecca by Daphne de Maurier. Highly recommend that book. And it says, there was no moon. The sky above our heads was inky black, but the sky on the horizon was not dark at all. It was shot with crimson like a splash of blood, and the ashes blew towards us with the salt wind from the sea. Okay, next one is zooming in, so starting out quite far and focusing on one point, or zooming out. So the sky was aglow with the unmistakable hues of fire. Glowing embers leapt and twirled in a fiery dance, twinkling like scars, stars in the inky night. Along the horizon, blazing trees began to fall. Each one would eventually turn to ash, covering the scorched earth. Amongst the skeletal remains, a solitary silhouette stood. In her hand was the match that created the inferno. Um, or you could just introduce a character. It was the ice in Micah's heart that led him to set fires. All his life he'd been an unwelcome parcel shunted between overcrowded foster homes. Then on a cold day last October, he discovered he could burn things, destroy things. At first he just kept a matchbook in his pocket and would strike them while he sat on the swings, watching the obedient flame flicker in the breeze, blackening the wood, transforming it to charcoal at his command. An uncontrollable grin would spread across his malnourished features that didn't reach his eyes. You could use dialogue, and I've said here, use with caution. Make sure if you're going to include dialogue in your story, and again, you probably wouldn't really need it for a description, that you use it correctly. So you're punctuating it correctly, Every time a different person speaks, it's a new paragraph, so you leave those gaps. Um, but another thing to be aware of with dialogue is to make sure you don't overuse it. You're getting marked for using your kind of creative abilities. And the risk of using too much dialogue is that you focus on action rather than description. So just be aware of that. Um, so you could start with dialogue. Please, a fragile yet determined voice cried from beneath the rubble. Please help me. And then you've got analepsis, so that's a flashback, but you could also use a flash forward. I can't remember where it started, this obsession. Sometimes I try to recall the exact moment, but it always proves impossible. The memories blur before my eyes, but one always comes to focus. Um, so those are just different ideas for how you could start it off. Um, there are plenty more. So I know this is quite a short video, but that's because I, I'd like you to spend more time planning your ideas. In terms of how long you should spend writing it, if you want to do it in exam conditions, you'd spend about 45 minutes, and that would include planning time. So for the sake of this video, I'd say maybe spend 10 to 15 minutes planning it and then 45 writing it, and make sure you proofread it at the end for like silly little mistakes. Remember that rule if you've kind of written three lines without any punctuation, then you definitely need to use some. Um, but I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing your work. Um, and I hope you're all well. I do miss seeing your faces. Take care. Bye.